Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Mr. Piri. I'm going to give you a presentation on income tax N6. I'm, ob ob I'm from Obit Tivet College. Today's topic, as you see on your screen right now, is going to be the definition of gross income. The definition of gross income is your module three on your textbook. Module three, definition of gross income is the most important module in the whole textbook because if you cannot define gross income, there is a lot of topics that you will fail to be able to answer. From doing the tax liability of a natural person to doing the tax liability of a farmer to doing the fringe benefit to doing the tax liability of a closed corporation or a company, you need to be able to define gross income. Why do we need to define gross income? The tax men, before they can tax you, they want to determine if you have received any income in a year of assessment. In your accounting, a year of assessment is called a financial year. In taxation, we call it a year of assessment. So, the tax man looks at all the incomes you have received everywhere, and they call it gross income. But there have been arguments before in terms of what constitutes gross income. In N6, we don't go into the statute or the case laws for your N6 topics, but if you go further and go to university and further studies in terms of taxation, you'll need to quote the case laws that defines gross income. Now, those cases came up with a definition to assist the taxpayers to be able to know if whatever amount they received in the year of assessment constitute gross income. And those definitions, the definitions got various components. As you can see on, your, uh, on your, the presentation that we have posted there, the, the, the learning objective after the, at the end of this module, you must be able to define it, to understand the components of the definition, and then from there, you must be able to apply those components. Because remember, taxation, as much as it's like your accounting, it is also the law. So taxation uses accounting language, also it uses legal jargon. So you must look out for some of the legal jargons and you must also use your accounting knowledge as we go further. We are going to deal with, firstly, the full definition. The full definition says gross income is the total amount in cash or otherwise received by or accrued to a person residing or non-resident of South Africa, and that amount must be either, it must never be capital in nature, but it must be revenue in nature. Now, in your textbook, these components are broken down in bullets, but when you read it together, when you read them together, they are actually a definition of gross income. We are going to start with the first component of the definition of gross income, which is the total amount. Now, the total amount, if you receive a salary from your employer, a pay slip will come with an amount, say, 5,000 rand. In terms of the definition of gross income, there is an amount of 5,000 rand. But if your employer decides not to give you 5,000 rand, if, say, your employer is, uh, runs a butcher and decides to give you 25 kg of meat, valued at 500 rand. 
The taxpayer says, uh, the, the, the tax man says, that amount also constitutes gross income because it, it can be valued into a rent value. Why the tax man put that in? Because whether you are paid with a physical item or with actual cash, the tax man wants his portion of uh, your income. Let us move to the next component of the definition. It says in cash or otherwise. Now, there is a reason they use the word otherwise. They use the word otherwise because previously, gross income was only based in terms of if a person has received money. But in other industries, people were being paid with stock or assets or free or cheap services. So the taxman decided that I'm going to include this in your income as if you receive them in cash. And then the, le the next one says, received by or accrued to a taxpayer. Now, on the third one, it says received by or accrued to. Let us underline the word accrued to. Why the tax man use the word accrued to? It says, if you were supposed to receive it in this year of assessment and you have not received it yet, I am still going to tax you. We're going to do an example. Mr. Ngau rents out part of his house to tenant. The tenant owe him three months rent for this year of assessment. The tenant owes him, say, 3,000 for this year of assessment. The taxman says, I'm not going to wait for you and your tenant to have an arrangement to pay each other later. I'm going to include the 3,000 this year and tax you this year on that 3,000 rent. Hence, the definitions got the word accrued to. You were expecting to receive it this year. We tax you this year. Then there are the next component of the definition says the income can be from anywhere in the world. If you are a South African resident and you're making money from anywhere, we are going to tax you because you are our resident. An example, Mr. Ngao received dividends from a, a company based in London. The tax man says, you are my resident. I'm going to tax you in the grounds in South Africa. So that is why the definition also have to use the word resident and non-resident. So that, because both of them are text, but they are explained further how they are text. A South African resident is taxed from all his worldwide income. A non-resident is taxed based on the source. You look at the next slide, it's going to say, the, 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 fourth, the fifth bullet, it says, uh, if your source of income is a South African source, we are going to deem your income, we are going to tax your income. Or even if we deem that income that you have received a South African source, we are going to tax you here. An example of a non-resident receiving income from a South African source is, I'll give you this transaction, Mr. Cherema, who is a Zimbabwe national, receives a salary for offering lectures to students at the college in South Africa. Now, the source of income is South Africa, but 
The person in question is a Zimbabwe. The source of income, because it's South Africa, the person will be taxed in South Africa. That is the part of non-resident tax. How is a non-resident going to be taxed? Now, let us move to uh, the last bullet that now splits between, because remember, the taxman takes you on revenue or income. And the taxman doesn't tax you on capital. Now, because tax income tax students are also accounting students, they understand the capital, but I'll explain. Remember when you're starting to do business and accounting at secondary, they told you that capital is money to start business. Eh? Now, if you receive any money, and that money is deemed to be capital, the taxman cannot tax you on capital. But the taxman is going to tax you on revenue. Let us give an example. Mr. Stenkam receives 100,000 rand from APSA to set up a small business. Now, when the taxman sees 100,000 rand going into Mr. Stenkamp's account, he wants to know what is it for, whether it is revenue or whether it is capital. If Mr. Stenkamp sold some items and he made money and he received 100,000, the taxman wants to tax you on it. But if Mr. Stenkamp received 100,000 right because he's going to start a business, then the taxman says, this is capital. We cannot tax you now. We're going to tax you once you start operating the business. That is why every transaction that you receive in taxation, you need to know whether it is revenue or capital. Because if you include capital transactions in revenue, you are going to overtax your clients because some of you are going to be tax commissioners. So every time you do this topic, you see yourself as a tax commissioner, you are working for SARS. You are assisting the receiver of revenue to collect the revenue. So you are in the position and the person you are dealing with is your client. You are assisting them in terms of how much they are going to be taxed for the year of assessment. Now, also on capital, the extension of the definition requires you to look deeper into the intention. Because they can hide behind the language. So you need to give yourself further examples so that you can drill into what are the intentions of these transactions. Are they capital-based or revenue-based? Now, if you look into a textbook, when they define capital, they use two key terminologies. They say they give you intention, and they also give you specific situation. I'm going to repeat. They give you intention, and they give you specific situation. Now, there is a reason why they use this language, intention and specific. In old textbooks, they use special situation. Now, the textman removed the word special because the word special was too ambiguous. And then everybody can arrive and say, no, this one is a special transaction. I'm a special case. Now, the textman removed the word special on the definition because remember, I said taxation is law. So the legal people are very clever in using the right language. Now they use the word intention. They say, OK, if we don't know exactly what's happening here, let us look at the intention of the person. I'll give you an example of intention. Uh, Mr. Stenkamp breeds pit bulls. And then he sells them to his friends. Now, somebody's going to say, no, is this, these are his pit bulls. Why must the taxman be involved? 
Now you must look at the whole thing. I said Mr. Stenka breeds pit bulls and he sells them to his friends. Now the text man says, okay, breed. The word breed means this guy, he keeps on breeding and he sells. And he says, okay, what is the intention? The intention is a scheme of profit making. And he says, there is trade, there is revenue. If Mr. Stian Kam just have pit bulls and they've got puppies, and then he just give them to his friends. But immediately when you get a question where you see the word breeds, because a breeder now is in business. There is a scheme of profit making, and there is intention to make profit, and it qualifies as a revenue, and the sales of those puppies will be included in Mr. Stenkamp's gross income and will be taxed in full. Another one, Mr. Stenkamp sold this house, but then Mr. Stenkamp sells another house, and he sells another house. The tax man says, okay, if you sold the first house, we can say you just sold your house. It's capital. But if you sell the second one, the third one, you are no longer just selling a primary resident. You are in a scheme. If the transaction repeats itself, the sale tax man says there is a scheme of profit making. This is no longer just selling of a capital item. There is a scheme, the person's intention is to make profit. So if he sells more houses, we're gonna tax him on the revenue from those houses. Now, you see, now the word intention and specific situation. Now, this one that I just gave you are focusing too much on intention. What is the intention of the tax payer? And once we zoom into the intention of the taxpayer, then we decide whether or not we're gonna tax you or not tax you. Uh, specific situations. Guys, under specific situations, the tax man looks specifically on the transaction. Remember, income tax deals with accounting transactions for individuals and businesses. So each and every transaction is looked at and interpreted according to the gross income or gross income definition. And it must qualify one or more of the definition. Now, under specific situation uh, definition, the tax man says, I, it must qualify under certain situations like, for example, if your, uh, your business, part of your business bend down and you receive payments from the insurance. Now the tax man will look at the situation because remember bidding of a building, a building in accounting is a capital asset. asset. The tax man will say, okay, let us look at the item in question. The item in question is a building. A building is a capital I item and a capital item, even if it didn't bend down, it was not gonna be taxed. So the tax, if you receive money to replace a capital item, the tax man will say, I'm not gonna tax you on the money that you receive from this insurance because the item that they are paying for, it is a capital item. Now, let us use the same example of you receiving money from insurance. In this case, in your accounting with your accounting lecturer, when you deal with insurance claims, the owner of the business received 5,000 rand for stock that was burned by fire. Now, in the first example, the building was burned by fire. In this example, the stock is destroyed by fire. Now the tax man says, no, if this stock was not destroyed by fire, you're gonna sell the stock and receive revenue. And revenue falls under the definition of gross income. So any money from insurance to replace stock, it is taxed in full. 
They tax you as if you sold the stock. That's a specific situation. Now, what are the easy ways to remember specific situations? Firstly, when you receive a specific situation, transaction split it between is the item in question a capital item or is it a revenue item? If it's a capital item, not taxable. If it's a revenue item, taxable in full. Yeah. Now, we're going to move to examples. Remember, the examples allow us to summarize the gross income definition so that you can apply it in any, if you understand the definition, you are, can apply the definition in any transaction. No matter how the transaction can be phrased, you put the definition there and you check if it qualifies in one or more of the definition of gross income. And then you must try to, this, this, this definition, just like you know your, some of your principles of accounting and ledger, it is your passport to understanding taxation. I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to do a few examples. I'll give you an example, and I'm going to tell you whether the amount in question in the example is taxable or not taxable, and whether it's taxable in full or not taxable, because Gross income forms part of your question one and question two. And this can cover close to 40% of your examination. And then again, gross income definition, it is a principle for all your modules in income tax. So if you master this one, you're already 40% into your examination. The first example, Mr. Ngozi received 25,000 for the current year of assessment from the South African employer. Now the question is, uh, is this amount gonna be taxed or not? It's a simple transaction of salary. The amount will be taxable in full. And then when you go higher and do taxation at the university, they're gonna say, give a reason and even quote the case law. If you, if you want to give a reason, you can say the employer is a South African employer and Mr. Ngozi is a South African resident. So it's resident based and the employer, the source of income is also South Africa. You can also include, go ahead and say there is a total amount because we can see it, again, it's 25,000. So there is a total amount, there is in cash, and the, the source of income is South Africa. The next example, Mr. Ngozi receives 20 kg of meat valued at 1,200 rand and a cash amount of 500 rand for the week's job at the butcher. Now, remember the question still says, Tell us which amount will be taxable. Now, remember the definition of gross income. We said in cash or otherwise. Now, the amount, the value of the meat, is, which is 1,200, the taxman says, I'm going to tax you as if you received it in cash. So both amounts will be taxed in full because they fall under the the definition of gross income, which is in cash or otherwise, there is a rent value, and Mr. Nkosi provided labor, so he is also in a trade. Eh? Provided labor to receive income, they paid him with the meat, so there is cash, otherwise, rent value, and the total amount of 1,700 will be included in his gross income. The next example, uh, Mr. Ngozi rent out part of his house uh, uh, to the tenants and received 3,000 rand. Now, even though Mr. Ngozi's got a salary, the additional rent will also be part of his gross income. Remember, there must be a total amount in cash or otherwise, received or accrued to. Even if the tenant didn't pay him on time, I said Mr. Nkosi will still have to pay tax on this amount. 
I did the same similar example earlier. And then I spoke to you about Mr. Cherema, who is a Zimbabwean, but receiving salary in South Africa. We said the source of income is South Africa. So the, the, and then even though he's a non-resident, we tax him in the Republic. The next example is dividends from foreign companies. If you receive any dividends or you rent out a hotel in a foreign country, the taxman says, are you a South African a resident? If, you, if the answer is yes, we're going to tax you in the Republic. So the, your reason will be South African resident, and then worldwide income is taxed in the Republic. Yeah? Remember, for N6, sometimes you don't need to provide reasons for your answers. You just want to know whether amount is taxable or not taxable. And then the example on intention, say Mr. Nkosi received 100,000 from the Small Business Funding Bank to buy a small restaurant. We said that the intention to start a business, remember your accounting, money to start business is capital. So capital cannot be taxed. So it's not revenue in nature. Okay. Mr. Nkosi received 10,000 rand from the payment of insurance for damage of the building. We did the same ex example earlier. The building of a business is capital asset, cannot be taxed, so it's going to be non-taxable. So this one falls under the definition of specific situations. Mr. Ngozi received also insurance for stock damage by fire. We said also false. the reason is specific situations. Uh, but because stock, you were to sell it, it's a revenue when you sell it, it's going to be included in your gross income. This one is very important because it might confuse you that we didn't sell anything, we just received money. It is revenue because the tax man said, if it didn't burn, you are gonna sell it, and then you are gonna make money from it. Now, the last one, Mr. Ngozi received a gift from his colleagues at the value of 1,000 during the year of assessment, and then won 5,000 from the local newspaper competitions. Now, this one falls under fortuitous gains, and the tax man says fortuitous gains are capital in nature, and then both amounts, remember I said gifts from colleagues, and 5,000 runs from local newspaper competition, they are non-taxable. It is very important for you to remember the reasons because the transaction can come anyhow, and you must be able to interpret it anyway. I think we covered all the components of the definition of gross income. And in conclusion, understand the definition of gross income because it gives you access to deal with all the other topics in all the modules in your textbook. Thank you.